In this session, we will see how to easily containerize a decision manager microservice and run it and deploy it on OpenShift. To start with, let's take a quick look at the decision manager application. So in here, we have a very simple decision manager application that has a couple of rules defined in it. And we also have the corresponding configuration defined in the form of kmodule.xml where we have the kbase and the k session defined for the decision manager application. Now taking a quick look at the pom.xml of this application, we can see that the group ID, artifact ID and the version number for this application is well defined with no explicit dependency to any other artifacts. In order to containerize this decision manager application, we would be using a Java Spring Boot application which would act as a wrapper for this decision manager application. So let's take a quick look at the Spring Boot application. In the pom.xml of the Spring Boot application, we can see that in the parent element, we have defined the artifact reference to Spring Boot starter parent. In addition to that, we also have the explicit dependency to the decision manager application that we had seen just now. And there are other dependencies that are also defined to the decision manager APIs that we would be using in this Spring Boot application. And finally, we also have an explicit dependency to the Spring Boot starter web artifact, which we would be using to primarily expose a REST API from this Spring Boot application, which would in turn invoke the decision manager. So let's take a quick look at the Spring Boot application. So we have a very simple controller defined here, which provides the REST API called InvokeDM. And this API, when invoked, internally calls the service. And this service uses the decision manager APIs in order to first create a stateless key session and then insert the incoming fact into the working memory and finally fire all the rules and get the response and dispose the key session. Now, we can see that we have an auto wiring for the key container defined here and we have an explicit bean defined here which would take care of injecting the required key container using the key services API during the runtime. Now, with all of this set, our Spring Boot application is ready to be running. So let's run this application. And now that the Spring Boot application is up and running, it provides the REST API using which we can interact with the, the decision manager. So let's invoke the API. So the Spring Boot application provides the REST API called InvokeDM, which is what we would be invoking right now. And we would be passing the quantity and the item code as an input to this REST API. Now let's take a step back and have a quick look at the rules that we have in the decision manager application. We can see that we have one of the rules in this application which checks whether if the item code is HJ84 and the quantity is less than or equal to 500, then it sets the warehouse location as border one. Now, as a part of the input to this REST API, the value of the quantity and the item code that we are going to pass now is something that would match this particular rule. And hence, what we expect as an output is that this rule should get executed and it should set the warehouse location as border one. Now let's go ahead and test if that works as intended. And we can see that the Spring Boot application has invoked the decision manager and indeed it was able to determine the right rule and execute the rule and get the output in the form of setting the warehouse location to border one. Now that the wrapper service for our decision manager application is ready, let's go ahead and package this application. So 
let me go ahead to this relevant application folder and execute maven clean package in order to create an executable jar for this Spring Boot application. Now that we have the executable jar readily available for this Spring Boot application, let's go ahead and use this executable jar in order to create a container image on OpenShift using the S2I binary build mechanism. So let's create a new project in OpenShift first and let's name the project as RHDM. And now that the project has been created, now let's go ahead and create a container image using the S2I binary build mechanism. Now for the S2I binary build, we would be using the Red Hat provided universal base image that provides the OpenJDK 11 that will be used as the base image for building our container image for the Spring Boot application. So let's go ahead and import the base image first. So we're going to Im import the base image called UBI 8 OpenJDK 11 into the specific project that we have created now. And now that the base image has got imported, let's create a new build, which we would be using for building the container image. So let's name the build as SB rules and we would be providing the strategy as source. And of course, we would be using binary. Uh, we would be providing the binary file, which is the Java file for doing the S2I binary build. So we would provide the option as binary here. And the image stream, the base image that we would be using will be the UBI OpenJDK image that we had imported just now. So we would be providing that also as a parameter for the new build command. Let's execute this and let's create a new build config. Now that it is ready, let's go ahead and start the build. And in order to start the build, we would be providing the name of the build, which would be the same as the new build that we had created here. And we would be using the executable jar file that we had created just now for the wrapper Spring Boot application, which would in turn call the decision manager application. So let's go ahead and start the build. Now this would first upload the executable jar file from the local machine to OpenShift and it would internally use this executable image in order to build a container image using the provided base image. So this process would take some time. Let's give it a few minutes. All right, now that the build is complete and the image has got pushed into the image registry of OpenShift corresponding to the project that we have created just now, let's go ahead and create a new application using this. So let's execute the command OC new app and then the name of the application that would use the container image that we had created just now. And a new application has got created. And in order to access the REST endpoint provided by our application, let's expose the service that's provided by this application. And let's check whether the application is up and running. Yes, it is indeed up and running. So let's get the route that we have created just now. And now let's go ahead and invoke the API that's provided by the Spring Boot application, which exposes this route. And once again, we would be passing in the same input, in this case, the quantity as 200 and the item code as HJ84. And we expect that the 
Springboard application should be able to invoke the decision manager application and provide the expected warehouse location, which is border one. Let's execute it. And as expected, we see that once again, we've got, we were able to execute the decision manager application, which has been deployed as in the form of a containerized microservices and running on OpenShift. With that, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.